In this video, we'll cover the concept of concurrent import sets. If we've got more than 100,000 records to import, we might consider using a concurrent import set. Now, in this context, this doesn't mean running multiple imports at the same time, but a single data source that processes its import sets and transforms them concurrently, spreading the work across multiple nodes in your instance cluster, thus reducing overall processing time. That being said, Concurrent import sets actually add processing and monitoring overhead to the system, but overall, they can reduce the time it takes to import the data, so we recommend using them with large data sets only. In the previous video, we saw how to schedule an import by going to System Import Sets, Administration, Scheduled Imports. Let's go through the process of taking an existing data source and scheduling a concurrent import for it. We'll create the new schedule record and give it a name, point it to our data source, and for this example, I'll use my account in the Run As field. However, remember our best practice from the last video? We should really be using the dedicated integration account. We're also going to tell it to run once a day at 1 a.m. When we check concurrent import, it tells the system to create multiple import sets. The number of import sets is based on the number of nodes making up your instance. Typically, this is two times the number of nodes. For example, if we have two nodes, the system creates four import sets. The maximum number of import sets is controlled by the system property seen here. So even if we have 10 nodes in our instance cluster, we won't get more than 10 import sets if the property is 10. For this example, we only have 3,000 records for the demonstration purposes, so we'll change the partition method to custom size and the partition size to 1,000 records per import set. We could also create a custom script to return a key that ensures all records with the same key end up in the same import set. We don't need any script run before or after the import, so we'll leave these two unchecked. We save the record and click Execute Now. Behind the scenes, there's a job called the Import Set Transformer that runs every minute on every node. It pulls the Concurrent Import Set Jobs queue to pick an import set and transform it. These jobs run concurrently, so if our data needs to be processed in a specific order, like creating users before groups, then concurrent jobs won't be a good fit. To monitor the progress of concurrent import set, we can go to System Import Sets, Advanced, Concurrent Import Sets, and find the latest one, and look at the related records directly from the list or by opening the record. If we want to reprocess the entire set of import set records, we can do it from the parent concurrent import set, or reprocess an individual import set from its record with the same reprocess UI action in the related links. The import set records are pretty much the same as any other import set, except for the concurrent import set field. In an earlier episode on transform mapping fields, we talked about coalesce fields. In short, fields identified as coalesce tell the system when to create a new record and when to update an existing one. So what happens when concurrent import sets are running and more than one identify a record to create? Thankfully, concurrent import sets use a locking mechanism. So the first insert locks the target table to prevent another import set from inserting the same record. Hopefully, this example provides enough information to understand when to use concurrent import sets and how to configure and monitor them. If you still have questions, check the description of this video for links or add your comments.